Good day everyone! I hope you are all okay. This is part 1 of lesson 5, preparing stocks, sauces, and soups. This lesson covers the skills, knowledge, and attitudes required to prepare various stocks, sauces, and soup in a commercial kitchen or catering operation. Here are our learning targets for today. Number one, I can explain the principles of making stocks. Number two, I can classify stocks and soups according to the ingredients used. Let us start with getting to know how to prepare stocks. Stock is a liquid flavored from meat, poultry, fish and their bones and from vegetables and seasonings. Stocks are used to make soups and sauces. They are also used in cooking many specialty dishes. Here are the principles of preparing stocks. Number 1. The ingredients should always be covered with cold water. When bones are covered with cold water, blood and other impurities dissolve. As the water heats, the impurities coagulate and rise to the surface, where they can be removed easily by skimming. If the bones were covered with hot water, the impurities would coagulate more quickly and remain dispersed in the stock without rising to the top, making the stock cloudy. Number 2. The stock should be brought to a boil and then reduced to a simmer to a temperature of approximately 185 degrees Fahrenheit or 85 degrees Celsius. While simmering, the ingredients release their flavors into the liquid. If kept at a simmer, the liquid will remain clear as it reduces and a stock develops. Never boil a stock for any length of time. Rapid boiling of a stock, even for a few minutes, causes impurities and fats to blend with the liquid, making it cloudy. Number 3. A stock should be skimmed often to remove the fat and impurities that rise to the surface during cooking. If they are not removed, they may make the stock cloudy. Number 4. Once a stock is cooked, the liquid must be separated from the bones, vegetables, and other solid ingredients. In order to keep the liquid clear, it is important not to disturb the solid ingredients when removing the liquid. Number 5. Most stocks are prepared in large quantities cooled and held for later use. Great care must be taken when cooling a stock to prevent foodborne illnesses or sarring. Number 6. Once the stock is cooled, transfer it to a sanitized covered container and store it in the refrigerator. As the stock chills, fat rises to its surface and solidifies. If left intact, this layer of fat helps preserve the stock. Stocks can be stored for up to one week under refrigeration or frozen for several months. Number 7. When a stock is refrigerated, fat rises to its surface, hardens, and is easily lifted or scraped away before the stock is reheated. Ingredients of stock A stock is composed of four ingredients. 
These ingredients are usually mixed in the following proportions. 5 parts of nourishing element, 1 part of mirepoix, bouquet garni, and 10 parts of liquid. The nourishing element includes fresh bones, meat trimmings, fish trimmings, and vegetables. Nourishing element is the most important ingredient in a stock. It provides flavor, nutrients, and color. Some nourishing elements may bring other benefits to the stock such as bones which add gelatin. Mirepoix usually includes two parts onions, one part of celery, and one part of carrots. Mirepoix is a mixture of coarsely chopped vegetables that is used in a stock to add flavor, nutrients, and color. Bouquet garni is a combination of fresh herbs and vegetables such as carrots, leeks, celery, thyme, and parsley stems that are tied in a bundle with butcher's twine. This bundle is added directly to the liquid and is allowed to simmer. The bouquet garni is removed before the stock is used in other foods. The liquid used in stocks is almost always in the form of water, makes up the largest portion of stock. The liquid used to bake a stock should be cold when you begin to cook. This brings out the maximum flavor of the ingredients and prevents the stock from turning cloudy. When all the ingredients are prepared, the ratio of liquid to the nourishing element should be 2 to 1. Classification of stock White stock it is made from chicken, beef, veal, or fish bones simmered with vegetables. White stock is generally colorless while it is being cooked. To keep the stock as clear as possible, you may blanch the bones before adding them. Brown stock is made from beef, veal, or chicken. It gets its color from roasting the ingredients without water in a hot oven. The brown bones, mirepoix, and tomatoes or tomato products are combined to give a brown stock its color. This mixture is then transferred to a stock pot and simmered along with water and herbs. Fish stock is made by slowly cooking the bones of lean fish or shellfish. Vegetable stocks these are an important addition to many helpful dishes. In addition, vegetable stock forms the base for many vegetarian and vegan dishes. The basic ingredients of a vegetable stock are vegetables, herbs, spices, and water. Next, let's get to know soups. Soup is a popular menu choice as an appetizer or as a main course. Customers like the variety of flavors and nutrition that different soups provide. Soups should be prepared with high-quality ingredients using the right techniques and is usually served as an entree. Soup can be served any time of the day. It can be small snack type served or it can be a main meal in itself. Soup can be served as cocktail party food, appetizer, main course, dessert, and breakfast. Soup can be served as hot or cold, clear or stew-like,
thick or thin. Some common thickening agents for soups are roux, rice, pasta, vegetable puree, potato, and beans. Roux is flour and fat cooked together and used to thicken sauces. Other thickening agents are Classification of soups The three major classification of soups are clear soups, thick soups, and specialty soups. These classification of soups are further subdivided into different types. Let's start with the types of clear soups. Clear soups are all based on clear, unthickened broth or stock. They may be served plain or with a variety of garnishes or vegetables and meats. Clear soups are simple and have no solid ingredients. There are three types of clear soup. Broth, vegetable soup, and consomme. The broth is a flavored packed liquid that is a byproduct of simmered meat or vegetables. It is sometimes referred to as bouillon. Vegetable soup is made from clear, seasoned stock or broth with one or two types of vegetables. Consomme is a rich, flavorful stock or broth made perfectly clear and transparent. Next classification of soups are the thick soups. Thick soups are opaque and thickened by adding a thickening agent that includes roux, cream, or a vegetable puree. Examples of thick soups are cream soups, bisque, and chowder. Cream soup is a velvety smooth thick soup. Cream soups are made with cooked vegetables that are sometimes pureed. Pureeing soup requires the vegetables to be cooked to a tender consistency so that they are easily folded into the soup. The fold means to stir it gently. Cream soups may also be made with rich chicken broth. Bisque is a rich, thick, smooth soup that's often made with shellfish, such as lobster or shrimp. Chowder is a thick, chunky soup. Traditionally, a chowder is made with seafood or fish, but chowders made with poultry, vegetables, and cheese have become popular. Next classification of soups are the specialty soups. Specialty soups fall into either category of clear or thick soups. Many are hearty varieties that can also be considered as stews. Here are some of the common examples of specialty soups. Beer soup, bouillabaisse, chowder, consomme with gold leaf, fruit soup, miso soup, and shark fin clear soup. Beer soup is a thick soup made with beer spices. Bouillabaisse. It is a fish and shellfish dish, traditionally served as a first course of soup, followed by the fish pieces as the main course. 
Root soups are sweet type of soup that is made up of roots. Miso soup is a traditional Japanese soup that incorporates dashi or stock, tofu, and miso. The common ingredients used in preparing soups are vegetables, beans and legumes, cheese rinds, meats, poultry and fish, herbs, and roasted garlic, shiitake mushroom stems, slurry, and yogurt. For CSMA Values Integration, we have learned that stocks form the foundation of sauces and soups. The quality of sauces and soups depends on the stocks that are used as their base. The preparation of stocks, sauces, and soups help us to realize the principle of what we reap is what we sow. All the good things that we do in life will be reciprocated with good things. That's it for today and have a nice day. Bye! Thank you for watching and we will continue our lesson on the next video.